At 2.17 a.m. UTC, nothing explodes. No sirens, no fireballs, no dramatic headlines at first. Instead, something far more subtle happens. Across medium Earth orbit, navigation satellites stop responding. Timing signals degrade. Data relays drop packets. One by one, systems on the ground begin to lose a reference they never knew they depended on. The sky goes quiet. For decades, satellites have been treated as background infrastructure. Invisible, dependable, assumed. They orbit silently above us, synchronizing clocks, guiding planes, routing internet traffic, and telling everything from smartphones to power grids exactly where they are and when they are. Most people think of satellites as GPS or internet from space. In reality, they are the nervous system of modern civilization. When they go dark, the failure does not arrive all at once. It cascades. Navigation is the first to wobble. GPS signals are extraordinarily weak by the time they reach Earth. That makes them easy to jam, spoof, or degrade. When accuracy slips from meters to hundreds of meters, planes still fly, ships still sail, and cars still move. But confidence disappears. Automation disengages. Human judgment is suddenly back in charge, often without warning. Air traffic controllers notice it first. Flight management systems flag inconsistencies. Aircraft revert to older navigation modes. Delays ripple outward. Not because planes cannot fly, but because certainty is gone. At sea, the impact is quieter, but more dangerous. Container ships rely on satellite navigation, not just to travel, but to dock, align, and time port arrivals. Automated cranes in modern ports freeze, unable to locate containers without centimeter level precision. A small positioning error at sea is an inconvenience. In a crowded harbor, it becomes a collision. Then comes timing. What most people don't realize is that GPS is not primarily a location system. It is the world's most precise clock. Financial markets use satellite timing to timestamp trades. Cellular networks rely on it to coordinate data handoffs between towers. And power grids use it to synchronize the phase of electricity across hundreds of miles. When satellites fail, clocks drift. Milliseconds matter. Microseconds matter. The grid does not go dark immediately. It goes blind. Phaser measurement units, PMUs. The sensors that let operators monitor the grid stability lose synchronization. Control rooms lose their wide area view. They can no longer see power surges building up across the network. Automated safety systems detecting impossible timing errors begin to trip breakers to protect equipment. The internet does not turn off, it fractures. Some services remain reachable, others vanish. Routing tables update incorrectly. Cloud services lose regional coordination. What users experience feels random. A banking app that won't load, a message that never sends, a website that half works and half doesn't. There is no single moment when people realize what is happening. Only the growing sense that something fundamental, something overhead, is missing. And this is only the beginning. Once satellites go dark, the failure of navigation does not stay confined to planes and ships. It moves inward, from global systems to streets, cities, and daily life. Modern transportation is built on the assumption of continuous satellite guidance. Cars no longer rely solely on human memory or road signs. Ride-hailing apps, delivery fleets, emergency responders, logistics companies, all depend on live positioning data. When that data becomes unreliable, movement itself becomes inefficient, then chaotic. At first, drivers notice small things. Maps recalculate endlessly. Estimated arrival times jump wildly. Navigation apps suggest impossible turns or freeze entirely. People fall back on memory, but memory was never meant to scale across millions of simultaneous journeys. Traffic patterns begin to change. 
Highways clog as drivers hesitate at exits. Secondary roads overflow as people attempt shortcuts they don't fully understand. Accidents rise not because people forget how to drive, but because coordination collapses. Traffic lights, many synchronized using satellite timing, slip out of alignment. Green waves vanish. Intersections back up in ways city planners never modeled. Public transport suffers quietly. Buses miss transfers. Trains lose precise spacing. Systems designed for second-level accuracy are forced to operate by rough approximation. Delays compound. Reliability erodes. Commuters lose trust. And when trust disappears, systems fail faster. Emergency services feel the strain immediately. Ambulances depend on GPS routing to shave minutes off response times. Fire crews rely on live mapping to navigate unfamiliar neighborhoods. Police dispatch systems use satellite data to allocate units efficiently. When positioning becomes uncertain, response slows, not by hours, but by minutes. In emergencies, minutes decide outcomes. In aviation, the ripple grows wider. Airports rely on satellite-based augmentation systems to guide landings in poor visibility. Without them, airports reduce capacity or shut down entirely. Flights divert. Crews time out. Passengers strand far from their destinations, stressing local infrastructure. At sea, ports become choke points. Modern ports operate like choreographed machines. Cranes, trucks, and ships move according to satellite-coordinated schedules. A breakdown in timing turns precision into congestion. Ships wait offshore. Containers pile up. Perishable goods spoil before they ever reach land. This is where navigation failure transforms into economic failure. Every delayed shipment disrupts supply chains that were optimized for speed, not resilience. Warehouses run lean, stores restock daily. A few days of disruption is manageable. A few weeks changes behavior. People begin to hoard, not out of panic, but uncertainty. Movement, once effortless and invisible, becomes something people must consciously manage again. Routes are memorized, paper maps resurface. Word of mouth replaces algorithms. Civilization does not stop moving, but it moves blindly. When satellites go dark, the internet does not collapse like a building. It collapses like a clock that no longer agrees with itself. Most people imagine the internet as cables, fiber lines under oceans, wires running through cities. And those cables still exist. Data can still move. But data alone is not enough. It must arrive at the right time, in the right order, with the right verification. That is where satellites quietly matter most. Global positioning system satellites provide precise timing signals used to synchronize servers, cellular towers, financial systems, and encryption protocols. Without that shared clock, systems begin to drift apart, each operating on its own imperfect sense of time. At first, the effects are subtle. Phone calls drop mid-sentence. Video calls freeze for no obvious reason. Messages send but never arrive. Authentication systems reject valid logins because timestamps don't match. Two systems disagree on which event happened first, and neither is willing to trust the other. Behind the scenes, engineers scramble. Data centers switch to backup clocks, atomic oscillators, local timing sources, internal redundancy. But not every system has them. Smaller providers, regional networks, and older infrastructure begin to fail first. The internet becomes uneven. Some regions retain partial functionality. Others experience near total outages. This fragmentation is dangerous. Banking systems rely on precise timestamps to prevent fraud and double spending. Without reliable timing, transactions are delayed or halted entirely. Stock exchanges pause trading. Payment processors fail closed rather than risk errors. Cash becomes valuable again 
Not because money disappears, but because trust does. Cellular networks degrade next. Base stations rely on satellite timing to coordinate handoffs as phones move between towers. Without synchronization, interference rises. Data rates fall, entire neighborhoods lose service intermittently, then permanently. Cloud services suffer cascading failures. Modern applications are distributed across regions for speed and resilience. That distribution depends on synchronized clocks. When regions drift, databases split, conflicts multiply. Systems designed to heal themselves begin rejecting their own replicas. The result feels uncanny. Some apps work, others don't. Websites load partially. Critical services fail while trivial ones remain online. Users refresh endlessly, assuming the problem's temporary. But time keeps drifting. And drift breaks encryption. Secure communications rely on timestamps to prevent replay attacks. As clocks diverge, secure channels fail to establish. Systems become forced to choose between security and availability. Many choose security, shutting down rather than exposing themselves. The internet doesn't go dark everywhere. It goes dark unevenly. An uneven failure is harder to understand, harder to fix, and far more destabilizing than a clean blackout. By now, the satellite outage is no longer a technical problem. It is a societal one. By the time satellites go dark, governments already know why. The silence overhead is not an accident. It is a denial of service. Space is no longer a neutral domain. It is contested, monitored, and quietly weaponized. Long before civilians noticed navigation errors, military analysts were already mapping the jamming patterns. Modern warfare has expanded upward, but it doesn't look like Star Wars. GPS satellites orbit in medium Earth, orbit, MEO, 20,000 kilometers away. They are too high for most debris to reach them quickly. Instead, the attack is silent. Electronic warfare, EW units on the ground blast high power noise into the sky, drowning out the faint whispers of GPS signals. In orbit, stalker satellites drift dangerously close to key navigation nodes. They don't need to crash into them. They use robotic arms to snap antennas or directed energy weapons to dazzle sensors and fry electronics without shattering the hull. The goal is a soft kill, disabling the satellite without creating a cloud of shrapnel. This distinction matters. If nations simply blew up satellites with missiles, they would trigger the Kessler syndrome, a cascading chain reaction of debris collisions. But the Kessler syndrome is primarily a threat to low Earth orbit, where Starlink and the space station live. If the GPS constellation in MEO is destroyed physically, the debris stays there. But if a war triggers a Kessler cascade in the lower orbits, it creates a shell of shrapnel around the planet. This is the true nightmare scenario. The GPS satellites might just be jammed or disabled. But if the lower orbits are ruined by debris, we cannot launch replacements. We become trapped on Earth, unable to repair the infrastructure we lost. Civilian systems have no defense against this. An adversary does not need to defeat a military directly if civilian infrastructure collapses under strain. Logistics slow, public confidence erodes, political pressure mounts, space becomes a strategic choke point. Corporations scramble alongside governments. Telecom companies activate backup atomic clocks. Cloud providers isolate regions to prevent cascading data corruption. Shipping firms reroute vessels manually. Insurance markets freeze, unable to price risk in an environment where basic assumptions no longer hold. And through it all, the public receives little explanation because admitting vulnerability in space invites escalation. The silence overhead becomes political silence on the ground. 
Space, once imagined as a place of exploration and cooperation, now reveals itself as the highest ground in modern conflict. Invisible, fragile, and decisive. But the most important question remains unanswered. What happens next? In part five, we'll look forward at recovery, resilience, and what it would take to live in a world where the sky can no longer be trusted. Recovery from a satellite blackout does not begin with rockets. It begins with adaptation. In the days and weeks after satellites go dark, societies face a choice. They can wait for restoration, or they can redesign themselves to function without certainty from above. Some systems recover quickly. Navigation improves as terrestrial backups come online. Radio beacons, ground-based timing networks, and regional positioning systems regain relevance. Engineers dust off technologies once considered obsolete, not because they are better, but because they are independent. Paper maps return. Analog radios matter again. Local knowledge becomes valuable. Other systems recover slowly, if at all. Global synchronization is hard to rebuild once trust is broken. Financial systems resume cautiously, throttled by risk controls. Supply chains shorten. Just-in-time logistics gives way to stockpiling. Efficiency is traded for resilience. This transition is uncomfortable. For decades, civilization optimized for speed, precision, and global reach. Satellites made that possible. Their absence exposes the cost of that optimization. Redundancy was sacrificed. Local capability was hollowed out. Fragility was hidden behind convenience. Governments respond unevenly. Some invest heavily in hardened satellite constellations, redundancy, and rapid launch capabilities. Others focus inward, strengthening terrestrial infrastructure, decentralizing systems, and reducing dependence on space-based timing. The most resilient societies do both. They assume satellites will fail again. This changes how people think about risk. Preparedness is no longer a fringe concern. It becomes policy. Emergency communication plans expand beyond smartphones. Critical services train for degraded conditions. Education systems reintroduce basic navigation and situational awareness. The public learns a difficult lesson. Modern life feels seamless, not because it is strong, but because it is synchronized. When synchronization fails, complexity turns against itself. Yet civilization does not collapse. It slows, it fragments, it relearns. The sky does not need to be trusted absolutely, only wisely. In the end, the loss of satellites forces a reckoning, a reminder that the most advanced systems are often the most delicate. That resilience is not about preventing failure, but surviving it. The satellites may come back online, or they may not. Either way, the future belongs to societies that understand one truth. The sky is no longer just above us. It is part of us. And when it goes dark, what matters most is not what we lose, but what we remembered how to do without it.